CF in this crazy this metal flake, burnty, yeah, orangey. It's, it's a pearl orange, and I forgot what they called it. Something fun like Magna or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it really is cool looking. Um, so five liter, naturally aspirated, four, six, 30, what do we got? It's, uh, it's it's 467 horsepower, 400 and I think 89 pound feet of torque. As you said, naturally aspirated five liter, which is one of the things that I really like about the car. Like right now, we're seeing so many cars that are going toward turbo, and the Jaguars are going to supercharge, which is great and it makes good power and it's efficient. But they're going to try to get one last run out of their naturally aspirated car, and it 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 spins out to you know, well over 7,000 RPMs. It's got a great tone to it. Uh, it's it's a great engine. Uh, I like the interior. Um, I don't know. It, it's 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 got it's definitely got some spaceship to it. It does. What's the, what is the base price on this car? So it starts uh, around sixty three thousand, and by the time you load it up with a few options, it's about seventy three thousand. But you know, a lot of people seem to be comparing it to the BMW M four and the Audi RS five. Both of those cars, when equipped similarly, are more expensive. Yeah, the M4 is a little lighter. It's probably a little faster, but I, I kind of see this one as more of a sport GT car. It's more of a touring car. It's comfortable to ride in, and it's a great car. Is there back seat? There is a little back seat, as you'd expect in a coupe. Yeah. And what's cool about the car is, is I, I like that they kept it very Japanese. You know, the yes. look, the interior is still Japanese. And when this color, it looks like something out of a Japanese comic book. It looks like a transformer. <laughs> it does. It really does. Uh, all right, so uh, should we look at the engine? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do that. So you can see they added their performance touches. They got their strut tower brace. They added some rigidity to it. This whole car, Lexus dipped into their, their current lineup and pick the best of everything. So mm -hmm. the front suspension is from the Lexus GS. This is mm -hmm. basically the subframe of a Lexus GS because the track is wider. Mm -hmm. The middle section is the IS convertible because the IS convertible has beefed up rocker panels so it's more rigid. And then right. the rear of it is, is the traditional, the new IS independent rear. So it's sort of three three pieces put together to make one awesome sports car. Is this car available right now? This car is available right now. You can start we? What do we think of this? This spindle grill. So this is their spindle design. On the F, right, it has the more aggressive kind of, you know, grill to it, but the ones that have the bumper splitter and stuff, um, I, I think it's, it's kind of up in the air. I think a lot of people are thinking no, but, uh, it, it, it doesn't look bad in this form it's, and its aggressive form. It's a, it's a lot when you're standing here. Like, yeah. uh, it's got the mouth of uh, the Predator. <laughs> yes, it does. It's, it's a little mouth of it. Does, yeah, I mean, with the it, other... <laughs> it is definitely, I mean, look, it's, it's one of these things where this is definitely not going to be for everybody. But if you're tired of the seeing people drive around, and be, if, you, if you don't want to be the BMW guy, if you don't want to be maybe the 911 guy, though the price point's a little cheaper. No, this car, it, you'll definitely stand out more. And they, they, they do make this available in some cool colors like this. They've got a hot blue that's kind of cool. The interior um, looks really cool, the too. The seats are incredibly comfortable. Well, let's and, look at that. And as you'd expect with these guys, they get the technology down well. This, the tack is front and center. The Speedo is off to the side. And then the, the screen on the left, you can shift through all different sports, Sport Plus modes. The graphics are phenomenal. The seats yeah. are incredibly comfortable. And I love the fans and they're very space age and big time bolsters. They're heated and vented seats as well. Everything. So it's got is, pretty much everything in it. As well. You want to fire it up and see what it sounds yeah. And I think the tailpipes are actually hooked up to something. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see about that. You know, the interior's got the suede accents, which is nice. The carbon fiber trim panels. It's, it's, I dig the car. I it's, dig the car a lot. It is a nice looking, well, I, I shouldn't say it's a nice looking car. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good midlife crisis car. It's a good, I, I don't know, your wife would probably be pissed if you bought it. 
but it's definitely, like you said, very distinctly Japanese. And mm -hmm. for those of us who like Japanese sports cars and their heritage, this ain't the BMW, which is getting confused with the Audi, which is getting confused <laughs> with the Mercedes. This is its own thing. And, and in a lot of ways, it's a lot like what Cadillac is doing. They're going, hey, we're not going for the bar soap. We're going for our own yeah. look. I mean, I saw Cadillac coming down the street. I was looking at the headlights. Looked like a sh you know pyramid shape yeah, headlights. Crazy. And, and I, I was literally just looking at it going, I can tell this thing's a Cadillac just coming at me at night. And this is this is doing the same thing this is for doing sure. The same. You don't thing. have to get it in bright orange. You don't have to. Right. <laughs> I mean. It's, All right. It's so a, uh, it is starts off in the mid '60s. You can work yeah. your way up to the '70s. Um, they're probably not going to make these things for that many years. So I'm guessing if you want one. You know, surprisingly, they still get 25 miles per gallon out of this thing on the freeway, which is you know. Yeah. I think that's good for a car with this performance. So what's that? Seven speed, eight speed? It's actually an eight speed automatic, but with paddle shifters and rev matches on the downshift. So it's it works that's really great. That's what I need my 510. <laughs> All right, don't forget to visit carcastshow.com to listen to the podcast. It's up each and every Saturday. And until next time, this is Adam Corolla. For Matt, the motorator, DeAndrea saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. <laughs>